Okay, like, like I was saying in the previous exercise, a function, it's basically a fragment or block of code that has a particular functionality and it can be reused several times. So there's an example here in front of us. If we just run this code, you'll see that it's printing five, it's printing 15 and it's printing five again. And why is that? It's because the exercise, is st the exercise started on line number one. And then line number one, it's just declaring a function. So that line will not print anything on the command line. Then the second line, it's basically inside that function. You start the function with this curly bracket, like you do always in a function. And then you close the curly bracket when the function is done. This function is called sum. So basically it's a function that will sum number one and number two. So another thing that you need to understand is that functions receive information. So this is coming from the outside of the function. The function doesn't know what that value it's going to be. And that's something important as well, because we sometimes we're used to having, when you don't know anything about functions, you're used to knowing the values of everything because you are used to declaring the values yourself. You're used to having something like this, for example, you're used to having first, like, let's say, let a equal, let's say five. And then let's say, let b equal four and then doing let sum equal a plus b so you know and it's pretty simple for you to know that a and b are going to be the sum of both are it's going to be nine like that's normal and that makes easy coding but when you don't even know the values imagine now that you don't know these two values like you have a and b but you don't know how what a and b are or what's the value of them. That's normally what happens in math, right? When you learn about math. I don't like doing comparisons with math because coding and math are not that related uh, on web development. Maybe you are gonna do a lot, of, a lot more math in uh, artificial intelligence, blockchain, or any other topics. But when you're learning to code and when you're doing web development, you're not gonna use math that much. So, but it's, it's a good metaphor or symbol because you don't know the value of A and B when you're in a function. Like when you're creating a function, you say, Okay, I'm gonna make this a function. So I'm gonna allow, I'm gonna make it first. I, am, I have to say the word function. And then I'd say it's gonna sum. So I'm gonna call it sum, right? I can call this whatever I want. I can just put here pew pew. And that's my function. But my recommendation is do not put pew pew because then you will never know what that function does. You know, you will have to come and read about it or read the code to understand it. And senior developers are obsessed with the names of the functions and the variables because that's the you want to read your code and know about it in an instant. And when a week has passed or a month and you come back to your code, you never know what you did. You think you're crazy because you say, did I do this code? Like I have, I have thought literally that someone sat down on my computer and did the code for me because I don't know what I did. And I never thought I would do something like that. So don't think that you're going to remember everything. You're going to not remember 90% or 99% of your code and you're gonna think somebody else did it. So that's why it's so important that you call this either sum or maybe you can call it um, summa or you can call it uh, summing, summing, like whatever. Just try to find a name that makes sense. In this case, sum, it's obviously a great name. So, and then you're gonna put in the parentheses, okay? You're gonna put as many parameters as you want, like A, B, C, D, E, F, G. They don't have to be called A, B, C, D. They can be called, again, they can be called whatever, right? So I can put here potato and I can put here uh, patata and then I can put here car, you know? It doesn't matter because you don't even know what's gonna be inside. So normally, normally you create functions for a purpose. So you, you do know that it's gonna be a number because obviously some, it's gonna sum numbers. It could sum strings as well, like it could concatenate strings. So you could call them in a way that you know what they're going to be. It's like documenting your code. It's a good way of commenting on the code. So I'm gonna call this number one, and then this one, number, number two. Maybe you're saying, but what if I want a number three? Well, that's, a, that's a good point. You're, you don't have to worry about that late, right now because there is a way to have infinite numbers in at the beginning. There is a way, but when I don't want to talk about that right now, we're starting on functions. So don't worry. Just think about the only 
the only way you can sum in the world of code is two numbers. You cannot sum three numbers. Think about it like that. And then you do have, I, I should, you should change this to result or something that makes more sense. And then you can say return result. Basically you have now, you have a function that sums two numbers. So that function was here already. I, mean, I was just explaining what it was, but it was already here. Like if you, th if you see the code at the beginning, you'll see that it's basically exactly the function that you want, that I was doing. And then if you uncomment this code here, you see that it's being used three times, two, three, five, 10, and two, three. So this one, you know already that it's gonna be seven, uh, five, my bad. This one's gonna be 15, this one's gonna be five again. And that's why when you console log the three of them, you see those three numbers there. Okay, so the exercise is telling you, please calculate the sum between this number and this other number. So that's pretty easy, right? That after knowing all of this at the beginning, maybe it was challenging, but right now it's supposed to be easy. So I'm just going to copy this number and put it here. Then I'm going to copy this other number and put it here. And then I have to assign it to a variable called super duper. So let's do that. Instead of console logging it, maybe let's console log it just to see. There it is. It's that huge number right there. But what it's really telling us is to make it to put in a variable called super duper total 13. That's one way of doing it, right? Total total 3, not 13, my bad. And then we can just test if it works. It's supposed to work because it's in the variable now. It is working. But there's, there was another way, like you could have done it like this. You could have paste it directly here instead of putting it first in total and that will also work directly into super duper that also works look at look at this it also works and i think that's the only other way that you could have done it yeah and maybe you could trick the exercise just by summing it like this let me see if that works if i can trick the exercise or the test not the exercise but the test and yeah, no, it couldn't be tricked. Almost there, you. But yeah, I didn't. I didn't call the function sum, so it didn't work. So I couldn't trick it. But you get what I was saying. Uh, basically, you have to call this function with those two numbers. 